Am I the jerk for asking my partner to help with household chores at my place, even though they also have their own apartment? I am a 42-year-old female who has been together with my partner, a 36-year-old male, for over a year. The relationship has been pretty drama-free so far. For the past six months, he has been spending roughly six out of seven days at my place with me and my six-year-old son from a previous relationship. We mostly hang out here because I have to be there for my son, and he has roommates while I do not. To be clear, I love having him around. A few months after he started spending so much time here, I asked him to start helping with the household chores. These chores include cleaning and garbage since he contributes to them, as well as laundry, cooking and the use of my car since he benefits from them. I do the majority of the work associated with my son, as well as the majority of the overall household chores. I only ask that he does the garbage, helps with the car since he uses it, and helps with occasional deep cleaning. He agreed initially but asked me to ask him directly to do these things which I do. I have even started making lists, however, he often forgets or puts them off for so long that I end up doing them myself. His argument for not doing chores is that he also has to maintain his apartment and is making a sacrifice by not being at his place where he can pursue his hobbies. So his contribution in effect is that he is here. Just to be clear, we both work full time from home and split mutual costs evenly. Money is not the issue. Things escalated yesterday after I had a hard day at work and with my son. He is in the process of changing jobs and does not have much to do at work, so he has been gaining 6 to 8 hours a day this week. I found it really frustrating that I was struggling to get the laundry and cooking done while juggling my son in work, and he was gaming on the couch all day. He got angry when I brought it up. I could have been a little less snarky, and said that I do not acknowledge the sacrifice he is making by being at my place. He argued that the benefit he gets from my work is negligible I would have to do laundry and cook for myself and my son even if he wasn't here. Since the problems we are having are roommate problems and not romantic partner problems, I suggested we go back to dating so that we can each have our own space and he can pursue his hobbies at his place. He got really angry and accused me of trying to end the relationship. So, am I the a-hole? Sounds like a preview of what life will be like if you move in together, and honestly it isn't pretty. He is lazy and entitled, and what upkeep does he have at his place if he's never there to mess things up? Instead his utility and grocery bills have decreased, and he has access to a car. This guy is basically aspiring to be a hobosexual. Send him home and if he breaks up with you it's not much of a loss. Am I the jerk for missing our granddaughter's birthday party? My wife and I recently were told by our son and daughter-in-law when our second granddaughter's third birthday party would be. We were not asked if we were available that date before they made the plans. When they told us the date, we informed them we had plans but would attempt to change them. Our plans were for dinner with six friends, who we were going to be traveling with on a vacation two weeks later. We had made all of the preliminary plans for a house rental, car rental, and dinner reservations. The dinner was scheduled at our home to go through schedules, activities, and everything else involved in the trip. Since we had made all of the preliminary plans, it was essential that we be at the dinner. Once we were aware of the conflict we tried to change the date, but there were literally no other dates prior to our vacation departure that the four couples could all make it. Had we been made aware of the date when they were making the plans, the date would have been available and we would have committed to the birthday party. We had booked our plans with friends a couple of weeks prior to being told about the birthday plans. They planned the birthday for a Saturday and a baptism for granddaughter number three on Sunday. We told our son and daughter-in-law that we would leave at 4.00 a.m. on Sunday to get to the baptism in time and then stay the rest of the day and evening to celebrate granddaughter number two's birthday. On Saturday, we sent a text to our son reconfirming the time and location of the baptism and our plans for the stay, even though they were aware for the past couple of weeks of our plans. We received a message back telling us do not come tomorrow. Since that time, they have skipped their twice a week portal calls where we talk to the grandkids and read them some books. They also refuse to let us talk to granddaughter number two on her actual birthday. We have always made it a point to drop everything to visit the kids and grandkids. We are more than four hours away and think nothing of driving down early and returning home that night. On one occasion, we drove the more than four hours each way to watch a 20-minute dance recital. We really wanted to be at her party but the other plans were made first and were not able to be changed. We were not asked in advance if the date worked for us but our daughter-in-law's parents, our son and daughter-in-law's friends and the priest were. We can understand our son and daughter-in-law being disappointed that we could not make it, but behaving as they are and using their kids against us, especially since we very rarely ever miss anything, seems completely inappropriate. Am I the asshole? You are not the jerk. Her parents are holding a grudge over something she's not even aware of. You had other plans, plans that were important, and you expressed this to them. Are you supposed to drop everything every single time they have something going on in their lives? Would I be the asshole if I berate my partner for not coming to my birthday? Sure, here's the revised text. I just turned 25 today. My family always takes me to my favorite restaurant to celebrate. I just like to spend time with my loved ones on my special day. For some context, my boyfriend Drew, who is 31 years old, 
and I are currently in a long-distance relationship as I had to quit my job in his city and go back to mine. We have been together for 9 months in total and 6 months long distance. We are 2 hours away from each other and visiting is quite inexpensive. This year, my younger brother has very busy Fridays because of college, so we are celebrating tomorrow. I already knew this a week ago, so I planned around it and I also asked my boyfriend if he was okay with the day and if he could make it. He said yes, and that he was going to come see me one day, my birthday, before so we could go on a date, just us two. Well yesterday my boyfriend told me he could not make it today, because he was waiting for some deposits and had no money. I told him not to worry, and that I would see him on Saturday as I originally planned. Today my boyfriend called me to tell me he finally got his money, but was not going to make it because his family last minute decided to celebrate his grandmother's birthday, on Saturday, instead of Sunday, her birth date. He would visit me on Monday, of course, I got upset, and he noticed and immediately told me he would try to make it tomorrow night. I told him not to bother and then hung up. The problem here is that my boyfriend always cancels our plans for his family. We can have something planned and suddenly he cancels or changes the date because some family member asked for his help. At this point, I feel I am his partner only when his family is not around. No, I do not know his parents because they think we are not in a committed relationship, because of the amount of time we have been dating, and will not allow me at their house. And yes, with this situation I have had enough. I think we can save the relationship if he commits, but I do not even know where to start talking as I am meeting my boyfriend in person to talk about this in two or three days. I have thought that maybe I am just exaggerating the situation and his approach is correct too. So people have read it, would I be the bad person if I berate my boyfriend for not coming to my birthday and everything else? Save your energy and find a new boyfriend who lives closer to you and prioritizes you appropriately. You cannot force someone to want to treat you well, and if it takes berating him to make him show up, do you really want a man like that? I think you should give the quality of life you would have going forward with this guy some serious thought. It doesn't matter whether his mother thinks you are in a committed relationship. What matters here is whether he thinks you are. Am I the jerk for not insisting my partner stay home from the hike? My girlfriend and I have been dating for around 3 years, and things have been going well for the most part. We are very different people. In fact, I think the differences between us usually make us stronger and a better couple. I am an avid hunter, fisher, and hiker. My girlfriend's idea of spending a day in nature is listening to music on her dad's porch with the potted plants, and I don't see why that doesn't count. It's just different. When we first started dating, I cut back on my time outside. Not consciously, but I just wanted to spend more time with her. Because at the time I lived pretty far from her, it became a choice of which I wanted to do. However, we moved in together at the beginning of this year, and this summer has been the first summer that she has seen exactly how often I like to be outside. She told me that she felt neglected and said that she felt like it was a part of my life she wasn't welcome in. I told her that if she wanted to go, anytime, then she was welcome. But I knew it wasn't her kind of thing, so I stopped asking. Because of that, I took her to this berry patch I knew about, and we both had a great time, even if she got too hot when the sun came out, and we had to leave a little earlier than I would have liked. Anyway, we had a couple of small outings like that. We went berry picking, pawpaw hunting, and went on light hikes. I was invited back to my home state for a hike I have been on many times with friends, Devil's Bathtub if you know it. I asked my girlfriend if she would mind me going, because I hadn't seen these guys in a while, and we could catch up. She ended up asking if she could come, which is when I hesitated. This hike isn't too difficult by any means, but I was unsure if she would have fun, based on what I knew about her. I explained that it was a little harder than the hikes we had done, and that it would probably be best to work up to it a little more. She got offended, thinking I was saying she couldn't do it, which isn't what I meant. I tried to explain that it might not be as fun for her as the other hikes we had. She insisted it was no big deal, and that she would have a great time, so I decided to trust her judgment and agree. So we go, and it goes about as well as you're picturing. We made it about a quarter of the way through before she started getting upset. It was visible but she didn't say anything. I tried to be as supportive as I could, but she was just quiet, angry and snippy the whole time. When we got to the car, she started crying and accusing me of setting her up, because it was harder than she expected, and said I should have told her that it was that hard. I told her that I had, but she said that I didn't explain it well enough, and that I made her look like an idiot. In my opinion, I did everything I could to warn her, and she is an adult who had the facts and internet access if she wanted to double check her theory that it would be no trouble. Am I the jerk? You are not the bad guy in this situation. You warned her and suggested working up to it, but she insisted she was fine. Next time, it might be better to explain how much more strenuous it will be, rather than saying not as fun. It's important to gauge each other's abilities without taking it personally. You can enjoy hobbies separately, and go on easier hikes together. Am I the jerk for cursing out my friend? For context, my friend and I are close. He has always been someone I have confided in for my problems, and he has confided in me for his problems. I will call him A. I am 17 years old and he is 19 years old. Last Friday, I found out that my father's girlfriend was going to stay over at the house, 
I dislike her, so I was obviously upset. I was finally working up the courage to tell my father about some of my trauma, and she was getting in the way. This along with a sleepless night and life in general, broke me, and I was going through a complete mental breakdown. I went to my father's room, but it was locked. I went outside but he wasn't there, he was gone. So I chose the next best person, A. I laid everything on him. Everything I was going through, everything that had happened to me, things I had never told anyone else. He was speechless. Throughout my rant for the first 5 to 10 minutes, he attempted to relate to me, but I guess it became too overwhelming, especially the more intense thoughts, and he just stopped talking altogether. When I was done, he was fully convinced of telling the school counselor. However, he didn't tell me that. He told me that it was my choice to tell the counselor and my choice to get help if I needed it. Later on, I received a call from the counselor. Hey man, are you okay? I lied of course. Yeah, I'm fine. Why? The counselor said my friend told him some of the things I said, and that he was worried about me. I spent 10 minutes calming him down from just talking to my dad who wasn't home at the time. Regardless, I finally got him off my phone. I went upstairs and sat in my bed. I received a call from my father, the police are outside, I said I would handle it. I went outside and tried to talk to the police. Some of my people were murdered by the police, so I am biased against cops. I was in the middle of telling them that I was fine, and I moved my phone, all black with no case. The officer put his hand on his gun. I was petrified but kept my cool well enough. The officer made me drop the device and he sheathed his weapon. They said to call them if anything happened and went on their way. My father called me and said, this is unacceptable. You are going to tell me what's wrong. I was being forced to tell my father about my trauma. I called the counselor back and went off. I can't trust you etc. I realize he is legally obligated to tell someone. But you know who isn't legally obligated to tell anything, eh? Afterward I phoned him and asked him why. Before he could muster up an answer, I cut him off and went on what had to be a 20 minute rant before my father arrived home. I said everything that came to my mind without a filter. I couldn't even hear his reaction because I hung up immediately when I was done. That night I had to tell my father a bad secret, and all it has done is create problems. I am stuck in the worst case scenario. My parents say he did the right thing, but I am still entirely angry at him. Was I justified in yelling at him? It's clear that your friend was genuinely concerned about your safety and wanted to help, even if it didn't turn out the way you wished. Friends aren't equipped to handle serious mental health crises, and leaning on a counselor was ultimately a responsible move on his part. The involvement of the police definitely made things more stressful, especially given their relationship with your community. Despite everything, it seems like your friend acted with your best interests at heart, and an apology might be in order for the harsh reaction. Am I the jerk for letting my ex-wife watch my kids? I, a 30-year-old man, was married to my ex-wife for three years. We got married at 18. We had two children together. We got divorced. She moved on, got married, and had another child with her current husband. I did the same later with my late wife, and we also had two children together. My ex-wife has primary custody of our two children, so they are with her 85% of the time. I get them eight days a month. She is a stay-at-home mom. My children seem to never need anything, so it is not my concern. Recently, my wife passed away, as she had decided to be a stay-at-home mom even though we couldn't really afford it. Now there is no one to watch the two children we had together. My ex-wife offered to watch one of my sons, while I took the other to the doctor one day, because I called her to let her know since what he had was contagious. I accepted the offer. After I got back with my sick son, she offered to watch them until I could find someone more permanent. She offered to do this for free. It has been four months since the boys have been staying with her during the day, and they have a great time and enjoy spending extra time with their brother and sister and my ex-wife's son with her husband. My late wife's family distanced themselves when she passed, but they recently reached out. Her mother wants to keep the boys while I work, but I told her I have childcare taken care of. When she found out my ex-wife was the childcare provider, she and others were upset. They said I am disrespecting my wife's memory by handing her children off to another woman to raise and called my ex-wife several derogatory names. They apparently think she is doing this to get back together with me and take over my children with my wife. I do not believe this as she is married. However, their words are getting into my head. I do not want to disrespect my wife's memory in any way. The two of them got along really well. My wife always said my ex-wife was a great mom whenever she was mentioned. I honestly do not see an issue. My ex-wife takes care of them like she does our two children, plus hers, and they get to see their siblings daily. Am I the asshole? Edit. I can't reply to every comment asking, and it's my fault for not including it in the post. Yes, my ex-wife and I have had a, had a conversation about her keeping the boys permanently, and she is willing to do so. I was trying to explain how the current situation came to be in the first place. Her husband also does not care because they have had conversations about it. I do send snacks, food, drinks, and other necessities for the boys. You are not the problem. 
it's great to see X's co-parent amicably. This reads like a super nice gesture of support, especially when things have been rough. However, four months is a long time, and it's starting to seem like taking advantage. Maybe consider having the kids stay with their grandparents a couple of days a week to see how it goes. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist in the description.